All right, the function f is defined by f of x equals the square root of 25 minus x squared for negative 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. And then part c says let g be the function defined by g of x equals f of x for negative 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to negative 3 and x plus 7 for negative 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 5. Is g continuous at x equals negative 3? Use the definition of continuity to explain your answer. Okay, so down here in the right, I've again pasted a screenshot from my unit one review sheet that is available for purchase on Patreon. I would love it if you would take a look and consider purchasing. The link is in the description box below. All right, back to it. So we are going to go through our three checks for continuity here. First is f of a defined. So is our function, in this case, it's actually g that we're looking at. So we're gonna see is g of negative three defined. So we're going to go over here to our requirements, and it looks like when x is negative 3, we would be using f of x. And if we go up here to this function, negative 3 is well within this interval, so this would be defined. So this would just be, yes, it is defined, and let's figure out what exactly it is. So we're going to be using our f of x, which is 25 minus our x squared. There we go. Okay, and all of that should be under the root symbol. There we go. And then negative 3 squared is 9. And then 25 minus 9 is 16. And the square root of 16 is equal to 4. Okay, good. Now, let's see, does the overall limit exist? So again, we're going to look at the limit from the right and the limit from the left. So the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right is going to be given by this function rule now. So here we can just use direct substitution. So we're just going to directly substitute negative 3 plus 7. Really, I'm being a little sloppy with my notation, so bear with me. I'm kind of skipping steps here. Um, really, I should have written of g of x there, but I'm just not going to write it all out. I'm just directly substituting here. So negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Okay, good. So now we've shown the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right. Now let's do the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. So that's where, that's basically the part we've already done because we're going to have to use this function rule, which is what we did to actually get the output value here, but I'm going to go ahead and write it out. So as x approaches negative 3 from the left, we're going to be using 25 minus x squared, and then I'm going to directly substitute the negative 3 in, so I'm going to get 25 minus negative 3 squared, and again, negative 3 squared is 9, so that's going to become the square root of 16, which is 4. Therefore, I can conclude that g is continuous at x equals negative 3 because the limit from the right equals the limit from the left equals g of negative 3, and they all equal 4. Awesome. All right. Well, friendly reminder to take a look at the unit one review sheet over on my Patreon page, and I will see you next time.